Let's go on to 6.4. Conductor size terminal temperature ratings. All right, here we go. Conductors are to be sized to the lowest temperature rating of any terminal, device, or conductor of the circuit in accordance with the equipment terminal temperature rating. 110.14c says this. So now, you need to go to your code book. And I'm not going to keep jumping back and forth in the code book and some of these things because it's just code rules. And so read 110.14c maybe a few minutes after we go through this exercise. So let's go through the exercise, get the concept down, then go back and read it. And then I would read it after you review it again. And I, I, maybe I wouldn't highlight it yet. Then I would have my code book out and I would play what we're just going to talk about now at the same time, giving examples, watching the DVD, watching the examples, looking at the code book. So right now it's like, hey, just hear what we have to say. Then stop it. Read the code rule. Then play it with your highlighter. And then watch and find out what information is really relevant that's going to be applicable to you. So here's the rule. If it's 100 amps or less, 110.14c1 says this, unless listed and marked otherwise, conductors must be sized using a 60 degree C column of table 31015B16. I do want to go to table 31015B16, 10, and maybe I'll get lucky and I can find that table quickly enough. And you guys go to that table for me. And let me go back to 100%. And here we are. Here's table 31015B16. And they're saying, unless listed and marked otherwise, if it's 100 amps or less, conductors are sized in a 60 degree C column. So if I don't tell you otherwise, up to 100 amps, you're going to use the 60 degree C column right here. And let me just kind of zoom on this here. Let's go to 200%. 60-degree C column. And look at this. TW is what? No H's. 60-degree C. UF, no H's. 60-degree C. That's how you size your conductors if it's going to be 100 amps or less. Now, we started the recording. In the beginning, I said, hey, we're going to assume all terminals to be 75. So, therefore, we're going to calculate everything on 75. But when you're taking a test... You can't assume the terminals to be 75. You have to assume the terminals to be 60 degrees C if it's 100 amps or less, unless marked otherwise. All right, let's take a look at a practical example of a device rated 100 amps or less. And the previous slide said, unless, marked, unless listed marked otherwise, if it's 100 amps or less, you have to size the conductor to the 60 degree C column of table 31015B16. So we have a 50 amp device. It's automatically rated 60 degrees C because it's under 100 amps, not marked otherwise. We got to go to table 310, 15B16. You got to go to the 60 degrees C column. We're dealing with copper only. So let's move down. 60 degrees C column. What conductor do we need to use? Rated 50 amps. We need to have a 6 gauge wire. So that's not a problem there. The problem is that conductors are generally used in the field is THHN, and they're rated 90 degrees C. And if you go to the 90 degrees C column, so we go to 90 degrees C column, which is one, two, three over, and you're looking for something for 50 amps, they're saying, okay, 90 degree, hey, you know what, I could use eight gauge wire. So they put an eight gauge wire on a device that's only rated for 60 degrees C terminals. Now, that's the problem. You say, well, wait a minute now. If you got 90 degrees C wire rated 55 amps, why can't you put that on, the, on, on a terminal, on a device rated 60 degrees C? Understand something. The way the testing was done on the listing of this product, what size wire did they put on a 50 amp receptacle when they were in a testing laboratory designed to draw the heat away from the device while something was plugged into it under its full load? They had a six-gauge wire, which served as the heat sink to draw the heat away from that particular device. Yes, the conductor can carry 55 amperes continuously at 90 degrees C, but once you take a conductor and you put it on a terminal, you have to size the wire to the terminal restriction, and the terminal needed six-gauge wire so that it had enough heat sink to draw the heat off. Does that make sense, guys? So going back to our graphic here, 
The wire would be okay for the circuit. The wire is just not okay for what? The terminals. That's 110-14C1A1. Let's go to another example. So here is a 50 amp receptacle, and it's rated for 60 degrees C. Well, then you'd have to go to 6 degrees C column, which we've already done. 6 degrees C column, 6 gauge wire. But if it was marked otherwise, if this receptacle was marked 75 and the break was marked 75, well, then we can size those conductors to the 75 degree C column. That's 110, 14, C1, A2, and A3. So, 75 degree C column has a single H. It's the second one over. I need 50 amps. So, in this case here, if the breaker is... See, if both ends are rated 75, I can size those conductors minimum to 75 degree C. Even though you have 90 degree C conductors in both cases... This is size to the terminals and the terminals. The wire is just simply there. We can't use that elevated opacity. Now, let's go over 100 amps. What if it's over 100 amps? Unless marked and listed, unless listed and marked otherwise, conductors must be sized to the 75 degree C column of table 31015B16. We've seen that. Here's your 75 degree C column. You can use that if it's over 100 amp your equipment rating. Here's an example. We have a 200 amp panel, let's say. Well, 150 amp panel, no matter what it is. No matter what the rating of the panel is. What matters is that I'm running, or let's say it's a 150 amp panel. And I'm going to go to 75 degrees C column. And that's an easy, convenient number. 75 degrees C column. I then would size the conductor to 75 degrees C column. I could not use. I was looking to see if THN had an advantage. There's no advantage to THN. I could not use any other conductor, but a minimum one ought. Now, this is an interesting rule. 11014C2 says conductors terminating on separately installed connectors can be sized to the 90 degree C column of table 31015B16 if the conductors and the connectors are rated at least 90 degree C. We're talking about you're not in equipment. See, no equipment is rated for 90 degrees C. The most anything is rated for is 75 degrees C. Well, wait a minute, Mike. I remember looking at some panels, and I remember seeing lugs on the panels, and those lugs are marked 90 degrees C. That's probably very true and very common. It's not important what's the terminal rating of the terminals on the equipment. What's important is the terminal, it's the rating of the equipment. So if it's 60 amps or less, unless it's marked otherwise, it's rated for 60 degree C terminals. If it's over 100 amperes, it's rated for 75 degree C terminals unless marked otherwise. And they're not marked otherwise for over 100 amperes. For all practical purposes in the field, anything, everything is rated for 75 degree C in the field. In an exam, however, if it's not specified, then you need to be sensitive to 100 amps or less, 60 degree C, over 100 amperes, 75. We need to make sure that every one of our questions in all our books Whenever we want to identify it to be 75 degrees C, Steve, you make sure you check every single one of those. We'll identify the terminal in every single example. If we don't, then we're going to have to use the 110.14C rule as to automatically go by the rule itself. This rule right here, take a look at this example here. This is a very rare event. This is where you're going from bus bar to bus bar. You're not going from electrical manufactured product, but you're making a connector that's separate from the equipment and that being the case, if you have 90 degree C terminals and 90 degree C wires, then you could use the ampacity at 90 degree C in that application. Eric? Yeah, where you might see this is if you have a motor control center lineup and there's no more room at the end of the lineup to that, add an extra stand, then you might have a separate disconnect on a wall and run a jumper between the two and you'd see this arrangement. Now, the problem is that if you run from the bus bar, the problem is when you terminate to the disconnect. That's right. Then you got to go back to 75. That's right. So you can't use the 90. It's only when you go from, a, from bus bar to bus bar, then you can then use the 9 degree C terminals and 9 degree C wire. All right, let's go ahead and finish this up. All right, well then, what's the point of THHN, which is 9 degree C, THWN dash 2, the, the, the suffix dash 2 means 9 degree C, RHW, used for photovoltaic systems dash 2, 
or XHHW, all of these are 90 degrees C, if we can't use the 90 degrees C opacity? I know. <laughs> this is kind of confusing. <clears throat> Why do we have 90 degrees C? Look, take a look at it. Go back to, let's see if we can find a code book. Let's go to table 310. 310.15B16. Let's go to that table real quick here. Right there it was. No, don't stop, stop. Oh, no. Oh, i got to start over again. Oh, I go backwards. Then what's the advantage of the 90-degree C column ampacities if I can't be using the 90-degree C ampacities because I have to limit and size the conductor terminals? Oh, let, let's slow it down. Forget about that. You got a terminal that's rated for 60-degree conductor sizing. It was listed. It assumed it had enough mass, whether it be copper or aluminum, to heat to draw that heat away from it, that's the size wire you need on there. You get another device, it's rated for 75 degrees C. Well, let's say, okay, well, then since that device rated to take more heat, the heat sink calibration was maybe a different size wire, so you could have taken an 8-gauge wire on a 50-amp piece of equipment because it was identified for that application. You say, but I got 90 degrees C, Mike. Why can't I use an 8-gauge wire 90 degrees C on a 60 degrees C terminal? We already talked about that. I don't know how many times already. It doesn't have the mass. Okay, but then why do they make 90 degrees C? It's a good question, and we will answer that question. Not right now. But I just want you to remember, no matter what we do, no matter how we work this out, you're going to size the wire to what? The terminal. No matter what you do, you got to have that mass. Now, there are other things. There's so many things we're going to have to work through that might result in you having a wire bigger than the wire that you'd have put on the terminal. You might come with some calculations that would say it could have been smaller than the wire placed on the terminal. In other words, whenever you do a calculation, you have to make sure you consider all the factors. We're going to have voltage drop. We might have conductor bundling. You might have temperature, ambient temperature correction. You might have continuous loads. There are you know, photovoltaic systems, maybe in the radiation factors. There's a lot of different things we've got to consider. But no matter what, the physical size of the conductor on the terminal is based upon drawing the heat away, no less than that. Okay? The other stuff is, yes, there are some great advantages and there's great reasons why we want to use THHN, and you're going to say, oh, yeah, I understand it. Not right now. Stop the tape. Go back and read 110.14c1, its entirety. Then go back and play the DVD with those examples, and then let it go. Don't worry about the 90 degree C right now. You guys okay with that? Steve? Yeah, I was just going to say that that one rule in 110.14c1, when it comes to sizing wires, so foundational. I think that's where most people mess up as they skip this one step you've just been talking about. They think about the opacity. You know, and, and it's important, but I'll put it together. It's going to be kind of cool the way it all kind of fits in it. You're going to like the way it works out.